Hi folks, how are you today, or tonight, or top of the hour? <laughs> um, we are here again and we are echoing 2015, one word per month at least. So at least we are looking at 12 words and we are <coughs> repeating that because with you and I we can do it. Of course we said that if we can do 12 words for one month that is fine because as Bible students we have to be studying prophecy more urgently <clears throat> these days you know more vigorously more intensely <laughs> because the time is short and everyone knows that okay the last time we dealt with um, translated. Translation means people will be translated to heaven. Of course, some will be resurrected, some will be translated without seeing death. I think it's appropriate that we look at resurrection. I know you, you, you were expecting that because resurrection and translation go, go hand in hand. All right, let us pray. <clears throat> Father, indeed, we thank you for this moment that we can get into the Word. We are truly enjoying being in the Word, and we hope others will continue to join or will join us as <clears throat> we enjoy studying the word and getting these guidelines in these end times. Thank you for your love for us and thank you for redemption and thank you for opening the way for us to transition from sin to righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, great, 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 great. <clears throat> we are having fun this year going into these words, studying these words one word at a time. and um, I'm enjoying it. I'm having great fun as I see how God is good to us. And the more we study, the easier it becomes. So I encourage you to continue to study God's Word. Um, we don't want to be malnourished Christians. Just as we eat our, our regular meals and try to exercise, I, let me remind you on, on that front also, that you do your exercise, get the body moving, keep the organs flushed and detoxed, Drink your green juices and exercise enough water, sunshine, air, you know. <clears throat> Get into the house and clean up around the house, clean up your rooms, let in the sunlight in your ho homes, in your bedrooms especially. Um, get rid of most of the junk if they are stuff piling up and blocking the flow of air. Make sure to address that this year because, you know, it is vital. We want to keep healthy because um, as, our, uh, as our brain is healthy, so our study will be healthy because we'll be able to comprehend the deep things of God's Word. All right, I went there, right? So, <clears throat> let's get back to this. Resurrection, one word Advent ministry, and we endeavor to dissect, to break down one word as it relates to end time prophecies. And so that we can have a guideline as to where we are going. It's his chart and the compass. Resurrection. All right. 
Suffice it to say, there are about uh, five resurrections mentioned in the Bible. Uh, again, others will uh, dispute that and say, okay, there are only two resurrections, and all the others just dive into those. But, you know, God did not put these things in the Bible just to, you know, fill space. And if God even put a word twice, like, for example, Babylon is falling, is falling, that phrase, double up right there, that wasn't a mistake. And that wasn't just a slip of the, 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 the writer's pen or a slip of, you know, God inspired him that he should do that. It means something. It is deep. So we have to study each phrase, each word, and see what God is saying to us. And again, the only way to obey and to love Christ is to hear what he is saying, a still small voice, and obey. Amen. So, <clears throat> five resurrections, I guarantee you, and we are going to look at them. Uh, the first one we look at is Matthew chapter 27, verse 52. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection, his Christ's resurrection, and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now, when the centurion and they that were with him watch, watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. So the first resurrection, those who came up with Christ, Christ when he arose from the grave, brought some with him. Of course, in another study, they are seen as the wave sheave, because remember, the the old scenario here is a, is a harvest is a harvest, and Christ will be reaping. So there will the this the the, the the actual farming was a symbolic of the, the harvest that will be done, the spiritual harvest. We have studied harvest, and so if you check out my videos, you will see another word there, harvest. Take a look uh, at that, uh, study that, and see if you can glean anything from that. Okay, so those who arose with Christ, we will start with those. Um, of course, we going into details about them, um, we can look at another quote, those who came forth after the resurrection of Christ appeared to many, telling them the sacrifice for man was completed that Jesus, whom the Jews crucified, had risen from the dead, and is proof of their words. They declared, We be risen with him. And those bore testimony that it was by his mighty power that they had been called forth from the grave. So here are the witnesses. You imagine you have your aunt or your mom or anybody who died during that time and you were there and you saw them coming. Now in these days I know you would run, but um, <clears throat> whatever the case may be, whether you run or you hide, they would have been real. Um, and they, 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 of course, he took with them to heaven. So those people are in heaven there. All right. 
Now the second group we we'll look at is Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. So turn in your Bibles, your iPad or your phone. Get your Bibles, whatever translation. I recommend the King James Version. But <clears throat> Daniel chapter 12 verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of the people, thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since uh, there was a nation, even to this to the same time, to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Verse Two, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness. Um, let me scroll down here a little. They that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. So you see a little similarity with this group. This group, well, similarity in the sense that the wise, because as we go through this, you are going to see that <coughs> they are similar in some way, but very different in other ways. But just to point out here that the wise among them, according to uh, uh, verse 2 again, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Well, right there you see that this is uh, one group coming up with two opposite our opposite um, sect. One is one sect is righteous, one sect is unrighteous. Right? So this is a special, a unique resurrection. But notice that it says, this is the part I was pointing out that, and they that be wise, so it's referring now to the righteous, shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as it stars forever and ever. So, just like the first group that we looked at from Matthew, um, Matthew twenty, Matthew twenty-seven fifty-two, that they were witnesses and and they they went to heaven, so they were all righteous. And they were witnessing to, to, to the group, to the people there, um, testifying to the truth about the resurrection of Christ, that it was really him, that it was really them. Can't want anything better than that. Now, they went and they witnessed. So we're seeing the same thing with these, that the righteous from this group, even though there are two different people in this group, the righteous from this group also went about witnessing, <coughs> turning others to righteousness. Isn't that um, great? Wow. It's good to know these things, wouldn't you say? All right. Um, <coughs> okay. So, many are here um, raised not all. It is different to the one of First Thessalonians. If you are familiar with First Thessalonians four sixteen, that's the resurrection that most people are familiar with, because that great resurrection morning. You know the song, in that great resurrection morning fare you well fare you well that's the time when Christ would have burst the cloud and 
graves and the sea and all that will give up their dead. Righteous dead. Only righteous people will be raised at the second coming of Christ. No wicked. Uh, okay. Or no sinner. Or people, well, sinner in the sense that they weren't, they did not get rid of their sins by confessing and repenting and all that. <clears throat> all right. And um, this resurrection of Daniel will point out thirdly that it will take place during probationary time because if you notice what verse 3 said as we just discussed uh, the wise continue to do what they were doing before death before they died they were obviously doing missionary work now they are doing missionary work <coughs> again um, I'm going to read from 7 Testimonies, page 17. The battle cry is sounding along the line. Let every soldier of the cross push to the front. Amen. <laughs> Not in self-sufficiency, but in meekness and lowliness and with firm faith in God. Your work. My work will not cease with this life. For a little while we may rest in the grave, but when the call comes we shall in the kingdom of God take up our work once more. All right, so this is clear evidence from inspiration and from the word of God in Daniel chapter 12 that this special group will, um, will be resurrected and the righteous among them will go back to do their work. Okay, let's move on. The third group we like to look at is the resurrection of the whole house of Israel. Have you ever heard about that? Or this is brand new to you? Okay, let's see. Ezekiel, we're looking at Ezekiel 37, and we'll start reading verse 1, and we'll cover the whole thing to about verse 14, but let's see. Reading, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5 of chapter 37 of Ezekiel Ezekiel 37 verse 5 Thus saith the Lord God unto those bones Behold I will cause breath to enter into you and you and ye shall live Sounds like a resurrection to you It does to me Um Verse 6, And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, Amen, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. <laughs> It sounds like some dry bones have some consciousness right there to know 
Their God, what do you say? Amen. God is good. Now let's continue to read verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. <laughs> Amen. And behold, a shaking. I wonder where they start shaking. Um, I, well, our song is, And the head bone connected to the neck bone, and the neck bone connected to the shoulder bone, and the shoulder bone connected to the hip. A chest bone and the chest bone connected to the hip bone and the hip bone connected to the leg bone and the leg bone connected to the knee bone and the knee bone connected to the foot bone and the foot bone connected to the toe bone them bones them bones them dry bone them bone them bone them you know that song oh man we we used to trumpet that song <clears throat> all right so, after the prophesying, so I prophesied as he commanded, and I love this. And it says that <clears throat> they prophesied, the wind prophesied, son of man, I said, well, let's go back to this. I love this part here. It says <clears throat> that, verse 7, let's go back here. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. <laughs> and behold, a shaking, I love this, and the bones came together, bone to bone. <laughs> and when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Verse 9, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord, Come from four winds, O breath, and, bre and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. The word of the Lord, O oh, sweet, the name of Jesus sound in a believer's year, ears. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, verse 10, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came in them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Who are these bones? The whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Hmm. So, this is a special resurrection, and we are seeing that the whole house of Israel is here. Um, <clears throat> you know what? This is interesting. This is interesting, because... I did do, as if you did look at that video, um, translated, and we learned together there that there are four groups of the redeemed, and the translated are put in different uniforms and logos to identify their ranks. But now we are seeing that the resurrected are also in different groups because here we are identifying a resurrected group being called the whole house of Israel 
and if we should go back quickly to the uh, to the first group we will notice that that group also the group that we identify no not the first group was it the first group let's see <clears throat> Now, the group that who arose with Christ, that, uh, of course, that's a special group also because we know where those people are, um, who they are, where they, they, they are gathered from, <coughs> a sample from the beginning of time, I guess, from Abel died, from Abel coming up, so Abel m might have been in that, uh, we don't know, <coughs> but it's a sample because the wave sheave, as it is, as, it w w as wave sheave would have been the type for that in the literal sel self sorry in the literal sense the farming depicted or symbolized the spiritual harvest and the wave sheave would be um, scattered you know ad hoc different um, different um, samples from all over the field of mature corn or wheat or whatever the case may be that would have been picked and come together and that would be waved indicating that a harvest is ready the harvest is ready so <clears throat> that's why we are we are looking at that as we go deeper into this um <clears throat> this resurrection but we have to know that there these resurrection exist in the bible and then we are able to study into them um, individually and understand what they are about and how they relate to us. And I want to tell you right now that um, what we are looking at here with the second group that is in Daniel 12, that <coughs> there will be a special people that will come out of that and those are uh, Seventh-day Adventist religion. Yep, Seventh-day Adventist. And um, <coughs> we, <coughs> uh, if you wish for us to go more deeply in that, to point that out, but the, 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 uh, the reference that I read showed as we go into that, that there, this re, this resurrect this um, group of resurrected saints, the righteous will be um, SDA Seventh Day Adventist um, from that religion, that church, so to speak, and the wicked that will come up together with them um, will be again those who s slay him. And those who spat on him, you know, people like that, <clears throat> will come up also in that. And again, we have to get deep into these individual resurrection. But the first thing you have to know is to accept and understand that there are these five resurrections in the Bible. Okay, so this group as we have looked at very intriguing uh, uh, the whole house of Israel um, <clears throat> would be the third group um, as it says he point out only Israelites are raised here when they are raised they are taken to their own land let's see if we did we read that <clears throat> Uh, therefore prophesy unto them again thus saith the Lord behold O my people I will open your graves and uh, we are continuing to read in verse 12 I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel so <laughs> Let's see, here again they will be raised and they will be taken to Israel. 
um, the Israelite down there seeing a lot of dead people <laughs> well uh, ancient people because obviously they will from Israel coming up if they see them I'm sure they will identify them as people from way back ancient Israel how they going to relate to that <laughs> well I tell you what that at that time Israel will would have been God's headquarters for his church because as I pointed out in my video that God's headquarters for his movement is in America now <clears throat> North America but it will be moving to Palestine and um, we have studied on that if you follow my video you will you know get the gist of how that will come about <clears throat> But here the word of God says, whether you believe it or not, I mean, oh, God said it, that settles it, that's how we deal with this. Again, I read verse 12. This has never been fulfilled, for Don't let anyone tell you that this is back then, or it has something to do with something now that is unexplainable. This is a prophecy that will be fulfilled in our eyes and <clears throat> these people if we are faithful we will meet them because remember we are talking about resurrection people will be resurrected and people will be and people will be translated without seeing death so some will be alive here when Christ comes while some will be resurrected but before Christ comes, there will be a period of time. That's why, again, you see all these um, studies, all these prophecies are interconnected. Now look at the harvest as it relates to let the wheat and the tears grow together until the harvest. Because the harvest is the end of the world. Now, one uh, will usually come to the abrupt conclusion that the end of the world, the harvest, is the end of the world. Christ comes in the cloud, that's the harvest. No, no, no. The harvest is like the month of December. The month of December has day one, day two, up to day what? 30th, 31st. 30 days of September, April, June, and November. You know, I have to do these things to remember which month has 31, which were month has 28 days in February and all that, and the leap year and all that sort of thing. Anyway, <clears throat> all I'm saying is that let both grow together until the harvest meant, or means, that in the harvest, you will start the, a process. And the harvest will begin first in the church. Christ still doesn't move yet. Still in heaven. Still pleading his blood in the sanctuary on our behalf. And of course, <clears throat> probation will be open. And so, it means <clears throat> that there are things that will be done. Sifting, separation. Gathering of the tares first, put them in a bundle, then take the wheat, put them in a barn. That's how the practical, the literal harvest was done and it depicts what Christ will do. Just as the harvest of the world or the harvest of the farm doesn't just snap in one day. It's the same thing. It's a period of time. It's called harvest time. Okay, so let's get back to this. So we are saying that they will be taken to their... Now, the word of God says they will be taken to the land of Israel. Verse 13 of... Uh, we are in Ezekiel 37. And ye shall know that I am the Lord <clears throat> when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves... You hear the repetition there? <laughs> and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and shall place you in your own land. 
then shall ye know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it saith the Lord then shall ye know that I have done that so when it is fulfilled both the house of Israel ancient Israel dead righteous and we who are alive or come up in one of these resurrection prior to Christ's coming <coughs> We'll have this experience and see all this happening. <clears throat> so, let's move on. I think we have done justice to this. Um, we never can exhaust God's word. So remember, pose your questions, your comment, your opposing views. Um, Let's go, let's study, let's, let's, deal, let, let, let's do this thing. It is very important. It's life and death. Okay, the next group I want to look at is the fourth group. And <clears throat> we will call them the general resurrection. The first general resurrection. The first general resurrection this relates to the two great resurrections that are in the future. Well, resurrections are in the future, but that is popular, as we know, it's popularly preached about and popularly, popularly known about in different churches, nominal churches. That there will be a great resurrection. Um, <clears throat> and it is first because there will be a second one. The first one will be the righteous and the second one will be the wicked. The wicked will have no part. The unbelievers will have no part in the first resurrection because you don't believe in Christ, confess your sin through him. He cannot qualify your resurrection. <clears throat> if you believe in another person, another prophet or another God who you know died, he remains dead, he has not been resurrected. If you believe that he is going to resurrect you or raise you from the dead, you are making a sad mistake. He is dead and he will stay dead. If he believed in Christ, then Christ is going to raise him up. But you will have to pay your own price for believing in him and not believing in Christ. Because Christ is the only one through whom one can be resurrected from the dead. Amen. <clears throat> Isn't that beautiful? Whether we believe it or not, that's the word, my friend, and we are going to hold to that. And okay, so this first great um, general resurrection is described in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. And also we can look at Revelation 20, verse 6. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and, the, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. <clears throat> so you notice... When Christ comes, what happened? And we have to emphasize this. When Christ comes the second time, he will not touch down on earth. He will stay up in the air and people will meet him up there. So we have to explain all the other things that people believe will happen at Christ's second coming. If we have to explain that, uh, reconcile that, with the fact that he will stop in the air and people will meet him up there. 
and then they will leave to paradise. Okay? <clears throat> so let's not fool ourselves. Let's not play church nor or play with words. Let's get deep under the surface and don't listen to, um, you know, uh, I, I fluence, uh, uh, affluent speeches and affluent preaching of this, that, and the other if you are not getting the word of God straight and plain. <clears throat> you know, as we usually say, no time for fun, fun, you know, um, surface, surface flowing um, <clears throat> theories. Uh, that's called preaching, as we have many these days. All right. Revelation 26, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they <coughs> shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. They shall be priests, and, and they shall reign with Christ a thousand years. All right. Um, the term priest also usually referred to probationary time. So having the title of, title of priesthood is generally for probationary time, meaning when <coughs> um, when people are saved. So of course when Christ comes in the cloud of heaven, the <coughs> probation would have been closed because any time he steps out of that sanctuary where he's pleading right now, any time the work is finished in that sanctuary and the plague starts to fall, probation is closed. <coughs> okay? So, um, anyway, the Bible calls them priests and um, that's something that we <coughs> may have to research. Okay, so all the resurrected were, uh, as we can see, um, <coughs> let's see, <coughs> the other resurrection, uh, I'm just skipping through some details here because uh, as I said if you wish for us to get into the details and, and other time we will have to get into the details but for your purpose if you wish to get into the details of each individual resurrection then we have a great deal of information in regards to that but we are just going to go to the the fifth resurrection, as we said, there are five that we want to cover in this segment. And so we're going to go to the fifth one. And of course, we mentioned them already. And that is the second general resurrection. The resurrection that will come after the millennium. After the saints, um, the righteous, who have gone to heaven for a thousand years, <coughs> they will... Be there judging. They, they, they'll judge angel. They'll judge um, judge who are not there. Those who are still in their graves during that time. And they will see the just reward that God would have given to all. Whether you are good or whether you are bad. You will be rewarded. And that's a fact. Um, <clears throat> but the, 
the saints, righteous saints of the first resurrection, will um, be judging these in the second resurrection. Now, that is described for us in Revelation 20, verse 5, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the, f <coughs> this is the first verse. Blessed and holy, well, we read that. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, and such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God. Okay. We're going to read, um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> that also served for both resurrection because it <clears throat> described those who have no part um, as part in the first and is a blessing. Of course, the opposite of that is a curse to be in the, second, in the fifth resurrection, which is the second death as it is called. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um, read here from Great Controversy. It says, At the close of the thousand years, Christ again returns to the earth. He is accompanied by the host of the redeemed he, uh, and attended by the retinue of angels. As he descended, descends in terrific majestic, he bids the wicked dead arise to receive their doom. They come forth a mighty host, numberless as the sand of the sea. What a contrast to those who were raised at the first resurrection, the righteous were clothed with immortal, immortal youth and beauty. The wicked bear the trace of disease and death. <laughs> so, while at the first resurrection, the righteous went into the grave with disease, deformity, and all the <clears throat> outrageous looking things that disease would have, have brought upon the nations. Even <clears throat> being decapitated decap cap by having one arm or no, no legs, whatnot, they will come back whole, beauty, skin, young beauty, <clears throat> shining beauty. Uh, <clears throat> and they will be in perfect health, fully restored to back in if they were like Adam, Adam when he was created before, uh, before sin. So no taint of sin would show upon the righteous when they are resurrected. The difference is when Christ called the wicked, they came up the same way. They came up, well, of course, you'll have to maybe put the head, because those who are beheaded, uh, if they were not righteous, are those who die in the act of war, and, you know, sometimes they <clears throat> saw asunder people, uh, I don't know. But if your body was <clears throat> dismantled, that, say, for example, in a crash, you know, they body or in a bomb, your body blown to pieces, the, the, um, <clears throat> the suicide bombers and all those. I figure that <clears throat> they will be put back together in a way. But what this is saying, I don't know, it is saying that the wicked, the wicked bear the trace of disease and death. Every eye in that vast multitude is turned to behold the glory of the Son of God. With one voice the wicked host exclaim, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> you remember when it says, 
that before him every knee shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, whether they want to do it or not, or whether they believe it or not, this is where it happens. That they will <clears throat> shout, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. It is not love to Jesus that inspire this utterance. The force of the truth urges the words from unwilling lips. As the wicked went into <coughs> their graves, so they come forth with the same enmity to Christ and the same spirit of rebellion. So it's no love or repentance that caused them to acknowledge God, but the truth will force it out. Because, you know, as it is said, <coughs> that the truth will set you free. <laughs> and it set the word free in them. But of course, they are too late to be free themselves. In John 5, verse 28, it says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of domination. Now, <clears throat> here folks, <clears throat> God is good, God is great. <clears throat> God has placed these truths in his words for us to study <clears throat> and understand. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, it's good that you've joined us in one word Advent ministry that we could have gone through with five resurrections here in the Bible. And um, <clears throat> I also want to bring to your attention that five is incomplete. But There are ways that you can complete this. Moses was resurrected, and, and this is what I'm doing. Moses was resurrected. Christ was resurrected. Five and two, seven. So that scenario could complete this setting. Um, <clears throat> so... Uh, in Revelation 11, I would just like to make this point to 11, it talks about a resurrection, but that was symbolic of the, the um, 1260 years of, uh, this, of, of the, the Bible, Word of God under suppression, the Dark Ages. So if you read or you've heard about Revelation chapter 11, dealing with a particular resurrection, the context of that is not a resurrection of the saints, but it's more dealing with... It's more dealing with <coughs> um, the witnesses, the Bible, the Word of God that were buried in the Dark Ages, buried symbolically all right god bless you again <clears throat> as i said you want to make this complete i just put moses and christ and you have seven resurrections god is good may god bless you as you join us as you go through all my all these studies and uh, as usual it's just a tip of the iceberg is just a tip or on your palate to study. And I'm just opening up <clears throat> these study gates for you or encouraging you to open it up. God bless you. This is one word. Thanks for being there. Come again.